So what is going on? What is going on out there that is really changing all this? Is it climate change? Is it man? What could it be? It's a million dollar question. We know that they want to spend millions and trillions and billions of dollars and trying to uh, change everything. Um, but in a, in a matter of thinking, they're a little late to the party, if you get what I'm saying. If it is truly man that has been causing all these problems, then the governments of this world have been in denial of what they were doing if they had the facts right in front of them. You see, the facts might have stated back then that they got to see on their, you know, nice little paperwork that they get to put as classified so nobody else knows the truth. And, you know, might have said, hey, you know what? Uh, if we don't start doing some of this kind of stuff and changing the way we operate and live and, and all this kind of stuff, we're going to be in a world of trouble. And, uh, you know, but this is going to cost a lot of money. And it's also going to put a lot of businesses, you know, a lot of big corporations and stuff. You know, it's going to hurt a lot of the bottom line. And these are the people that are probably lining these politician and presidents and everything else, their pockets throughout the whole world, not just here. You know, it goes on everywhere. But, you know, they didn't want to do it. So we're late to the party if it is our fault for what is taking place. No, I don't think you can blame us for everything. I'm sorry. I don't really buy into that whole scenario. You know, I believe that the earth actually does go through different uh, rotations and goes through different changes throughout its cycle course of life. We, on the other hand, are just like little ants living on this planet. Okay. And if you really sit back and you think about what is taking place and how the whole world right now is like on fire. I mean, you might as well just drop a freaking meteor on us because, you know, I mean, you got Death Valley that could break its all time record high tomorrow, which is 130 degrees. You have Las Vegas that's going to that's supposed to break its record tomorrow of 117 degrees. You have Europe. <laughs> I mean, they're burning up over there, over in, you know, um, uh, Italy and all through that whole area. I mean, everywhere you go, China, they've had extreme heat. It's everywhere. The waters in down towards the Keys here in Florida. All right. If you go all the way down and before you get on the bridge, if you get in the water right there, it's 97 degrees, the water temperature not the air temperature the water temperature is 97 degrees out down around the keys it's 96 degrees water temperature you mean to tell me that there isn't something funky going on here now rather you want to think that maybe it could be the governments that are doing this or you think it's totally climate change or whatever you believe there's something going on and obviously, we're never going to be told the truth by anybody. But a lot of scientists are stating right now that over the past 10 years, every summer has been hotter and hotter and hotter. And it's only going to get worse. I mean, how much worse can it get before people can't even go outside? I was reading in a report today. The, the price of soybeans dropped because now they're worried with the soybeans that um, a lot of the soybean crop is going to be killed off because of the heat and the lack of rain. Now, a lot of farmers this year were smart, and a lot of farmers did go with corn this year. They planted more corn than they did soybeans or, or wheat. Because maybe they saw something coming. I don't know. Maybe they read something in the farmer's almanac. Who knows? But the key here is corn likes heat. And it doesn't need a lot of rain. It does need some, but it doesn't require a lot. It likes the heat. The hotter, the better. So they're saying it's going to be a bunker crop this year in corn. Soybean? Ain't looking too good. The wheat crop ain't looking too good. All this has an effect on us. 
And these things that are taking place, you know, these are reasons why you have to be prepared. My daughter and, and son-in-law and my grandson, where they live in Vermont, which if you've been watching the Weather Channel, they show Ludlow. That's where they live. They were cut off for a couple of days and stuff, and luckily they brought in a whole ton of heavy re, uh, equipment and rebuilt their road because their brook that was out back, if you watch that video, their brook that was out back, it just blew out the road where it came down to the bottom of their property and it's supposed to go through a culvert. Well, it just overran the culvert because it was just too much water. I mean, it, it's a big culvert. It's not little, it's, it's big, but there was so much water. It just couldn't, you know, and then it just went right down the road and it's straight downhill. They live up on the mountainside and it's just straight down. And it just dug a three foot path right down through the whole road. They had to bring in, I forget how many dump truck loads my daughter said. I mean, it was just some ungodly figure of just rock and stuff. It's a temporary fix. Um, it's a one lane road now. You used to be, you could get two cars by. It's just one lane down through there, past our property. Um, and we'll see what happens. These are the things that you have to plan for. They were prepared. They had plenty of food. They had canned goods they had gas for the generators um he my son-in-law had diesel fuel for his uh, his tractors and stuff like that in case something happened and he had to try to divert to water or whatever himself you know to save his house and and what have you um you know so i mean they were prepared they had extra water they had everything they needed that's the key now my son where he lives with his wife you know, they're not, they weren't so effective because of where they were at. They're in a different part of Vermont. But, you know, I mean, it just goes to show you, it, it just depends. You know, when you part, start taking even two, three inches of rain and you put it into a mountain range, doesn't matter what state it is. If it's a mountain range, as that water is coming down, everything that goes up has to come down. I mean, we all know that and everything that's in those valleys is just going to get blasted because that's where all the water's headed. And then it hits these rivers and streams and creeks and brooks and everything else and just blows them out of proportion. And anybody living along there, anything along through there is just going to get totally wiped out. And that's what has happened. The heat dome that's over the South uh, and the West that has been building and it's, it's now it has shifted out to the West and now it's building up towards the Midwest and the North. I mean, this has just been ungodly. I mean, some of these heat temperatures that are out there, you know, you got people dropping left and right. And, you know, I laugh when you see on the news and like, uh, it doesn't matter if it's, uh, national news uh we saw it on the local news on the weather channel you know and you see these people and they're telling people to stay out of death valley they're telling people to stay out of death valley but these morons are going out there and walking the path out there because they want to take their pictures by the thermometer out there that they've placed a digital thermometer so that they can take their picture by it and show that it's 125 130 degrees meanwhile what happens if your car breaks down? Because I could almost guess if these people are these type of people that are out there, they're not prepared. You're not going to last too long. Your car breaks down, overheats or anything else, you're screwed. Because there's nothing out there. It's called Death Valley for a reason, right? <laughs>